After drawing directly on an 8 by 10 inch lino block, I spray fix the image using Krylon workable fixative. It's important to read the label and spray in a well ventilated area. The spray fixative helps to keep the drawing in place over multiple reductions. Without it, you will clean off the design after the first run. Let the fixative dry in a well ventilated area for at least 20 minutes. It outgasses for the next 24 hours, so it's ideal to leave it alone overnight before carving on it. Begin by carving out only what will be the color of the paper in the finished print. I'll refer to it as paper white, though certainly paper can be any color. It may help to think of your carving tool as the color of your paper, or perhaps as an eraser. This is the first reduction. Before proofing or printing, make sure you brush the crumbs off the block. Start by mixing stronger colors into white. Make sure that your ink knives aren't dirty. Typically with reduction printing, you work from light to dark. I'm mixing a light gray using white and elements of the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Some ink cans have been abused by past users who have gouged into the ink, increasing the surface area and drying the ink out. Sometimes you can insert the knife underneath the ink skin and get enough usable ink out. Though you have to be careful not to introduce bits of ink skin into your ink mix. Use a separate clean knife for each color coming from a can. Of course, you don't need a knife for colors coming from a tube. For each layer, you'll need some Setswell compound mixed into your ink, about 10% by volume. Mix the weakest colors into white first, followed by the progressively stronger colors Mix a little at a time to get a feel for how much tinting strength each color has. Once you've reached the desired color, mix in modifiers. In this case, sets well compound. Spread a ribbon of ink equal to the width of the brayer on the slab and quickly roll it out, being careful not to spread it all over. Maintain a rectangle the width of the brayer and the length of the so-called rollout, or the length equal, more or less, to the circumference of the brayer. Pay close attention to the suction sound of the brayer in friction with the ink. Too much suction equals too much ink. Not enough suction equals not enough ink. Roll out the ink on the block with a speed deliberately slower than used for charging the brayer on the slab. It's okay to use some pressure when applying ink to the block. Be sensitive to the sound the ink makes on the surface of the block. It will make a slight suction sound when fully inked.
Place the block face up and at a slight angle on the center of the press bed. Lock the registration pin template to the registration corner of the block and register the paper to the pins and down onto the block. Press the back of the paper gently to create a slight bond between the paper and the ink. Remove the registration pin. Place the tin pin on the sheet over the paper and run the print through the press. Remove and inspect your proof or print and set it on the drying rack. If you are satisfied with the first reduction, run the rest of the addition in that color. If you'd like to save your excess ink, you can scrape it up with an ink knife and preserve it in a folded over sheet of aluminum foil. I will often use this ink as the starter for subsequent runs. Fold the aluminum foil over and then roll the edges over a couple of times to make sure that there's no air getting into the package. This next segment provides an alternative for those of you printing at home without the convenience and expense of a printing press. I'll also be showing you how to use a roller with ink blending from one color to the other, often called a gradient blend or split fountain, though don't ask me why. I've mixed two separate colors, one on the right side of my inking slab and one on the left side with enough room in the middle to roll out three staggered ribbons of ink for each color. By repeatedly rolling across these ribbons of ink, the colors blend nicely across the roller. Roll slowly and deliberately onto the block, always maintaining the same track so as not to spread the gradient out. Always leave the roller in its carrier, called chocks, when not in use. Register the block and paper to the registration guide just the same as when printing on a press. I'm using the back of a wooden spoon to transfer ink from the surface of the block to the paper. It takes a firm, concentrated, and thorough effort to print this way. It helps to use the paper that is thinner than the cover weight paper. The paper I'm using here is called Nidigan and classifies as a text weight paper. think you're finished, lift a corner to check the transfer of ink. If your print is full, pull it off the block and hang it to dry. Continue printing by charging the roller again and rolling ink onto the block. It may not take as much ink this time around since you've already got ink on the block from the first run, but just watch and make sure that you have enough. You may have to recharge the roller and roll again.
a series of shelves that I've built that have screens stretched over them and this is my preferred method for drying my prints at home. Sometimes it becomes necessary to put more ribbons of ink onto your roller blend on the slab. You just have to be careful not to drag one color of ink into the other side. You don't need as much ink as when you started to roll out and in this case I'm just putting two thin ribbons on each side. as before I'm going to put all of my ink into one piece of aluminum foil to use later for my second run. Here's a handy video for how to clean up your ink and how to clean up a roller. One of the disadvantages to using a roller, of course, is that it uses up a lot more ink and actually takes a lot longer to clean. But you have to make sure you clean these rollers really well because they'll get ruined otherwise and they're very expensive. the first reduction on each of my additions since I'm printing two additions, one by hand and one with the press, it's time to make the second reduction. I like to inspect the reduction with raking light so I can see if I've missed any spots. Wherever I have cut, it's going to reveal the first run. It's the next day and I'm printing the second run at home on the second edition. I'm going to use ink from the first run as a mother color or a starter set and I'm going to mix another gradient blend.
didn't really cut out a whole lot, so it's kind of hard to see the first run underneath the second run, uh, especially on the camera, but it's certainly there. back at the studio on campus and I'm going to do the second run for the first edition. So this is still the second reduction. I've inked up a solid color here and I'm ready to print. Always remember to remove the registration guide before you send this to the press. You can ruin those pins and they're rather expensive. Time to cut the third and final reduction. This is a little bit more dramatic than the second reduction. I'm just leaving the dot pattern behind. I'm printing the studio edition first. So this is the third run on my first edition, not a gradient blend. I've just mixed up kind of a purple transparent color and that's going to be the final run. I'll proof this and see if I like it and if I don't I'll try a different color. about this it looks a little too dark I'd like to see some of that green shining through I'm gonna try the quinacridone red straight out of the can it seems fairly transparent and I want to see how that interacts
seems a little bit better to me. I'm gonna go ahead and run the rest of the addition with this color. studio to finish the third run on the second edition. I've mixed up kind of a nut brown and I'm not doing a blend roll. We'll see how this looks. So there you have it. There's two ways of printing, one at home with a wooden spoon and the other at school with a press.